Hello everyone, my name is Mr. N Jersey and welcome to my channel. Now in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can build a automatic transmission system for your modular engines here in Stormworks. We're actually going to break this down to three different sections. I'm going to show you how you can build a manual transmission system. I'm going to show you how you can then add an automatic system to the manual system. And then lastly, I'm also going to show you how you can add clutch management to your transmission system so that when you want to go and change gears, it's going to go and enable the clutch and then change the gear and then disengage the clutch. So just like in a real car. Okay, so we're going to have a look at that. We're going to build it completely from scratch. Now you'll see in front of me is actually a truck here. I'm currently building a truck for myself, having a lot of fun building it. And I thought it'd be a great time to show you guys how you can add a transmission system to your modular engine vehicle here in Stormworks. So let's jump into the workbench and see what I've got going on so far. So you'll notice I've got a simple truck here. I've got a modular engine built underneath here. If we go and see inside here, you can see modular engine all set up. It's got my NJ um, in ECU on it. So it's controlling engine, everything else. But we're missing a way to actually go and change gears at the moment. Now, if we go underneath the truck, you'll notice that we've got a bunch of gearboxes. Currently, they're not being controlled by absolutely anything. And that's what we want to go and fix. We want some way to go and control it. Now, the number of gearboxes can depend and you can choose as many or as little as you want. Okay, for this tutorial. I'm just using, I think, six or seven different gearboxes here. Okay, now once again, depending on which way or which direction you want to face this, which will depend on your own creation. Okay, once again, depending on how big your engine is, how many wheels you have, whether it's a boat, a plane, will depend on the number of gearboxes and how many you need and what direction they face in. Okay, changes depending on the creation. For my example, I've got one facing away from the engine and I've got the rest facing towards the engine. I've also got one for reverse gear, which I'll show you how to incorporate into your transmission system. So now that we've got all this in here, okay, all set up, all the gearboxes are here. I've already connected these to electricity. As you can see, the only thing we're missing is how to actually go and turn the gearboxes either on or off. So we're going to start by creating a brand new mic controller for this. So I'm going to go into my controller editor and I'm going to create a brand new one. This one I'm going to call the NJ YouTube transmission. Why not? And I'm going to keep it over there. The first thing we want to do is we want to add the number of nodes or on off signals as we do gearboxes. Now I have seven gearboxes. so I'm going to add seven of these nodes here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven of these nodes. I'm going to go onto them. I'm going to say, okay, this is gearbox one. This one will be, let's say gearbox number two. This one will be gearbox number three. This one can be gearbox number four, gearbox number five, gearbox number six. And let's call this my reverse gearbox. Okay. I'm also going to make sure they all outputs currently. Okay. So simple, just output values. And that will allow us to turn our gearboxes either on or off. Once we've got that, we obviously need some way to go and tell the system or the manual gearbox that we want to change up or we'll change down. So what we're going to be doing for this tutorial is I'm going to use the up and down key on the seat. So we can either go and add a composite or we can just add a simple number value because remember seats have either composite or numbers. And we're going to do a number inputs and we're going to say this is our seat up and down. Perfect. Now that we have that, we can now jump into the logic portion of this build. We're going to take my up and down, move it to the left here, and we're going to start moving this out. So this is my reverse gearbox. We also have all the different numbers and I'm going to put them into order in a few seconds. Okay, so these are my different gearboxes. How this whole system is going to work is when we're sitting in our seat, if I press my up key, it's going to say one. When I'm pressing my down key, it's going to say negative one. So that's how we're going to use to change gears. So we're going to simply go and grab some threshold gates and we're going to read that. So for example, this is going to send an on signal when it reads a one and a one on my up and down. And this is going to send an on signal when it reads a negative one and negative one. Okay. Any value between those. Okay. So very simple over there. Just remember that a seat up and down can only go from one to negative one. So that means when it's at full range up, it will be one. And when it's on full range down, it will be negative one. Now that we have on and off, we need some way of actually telling a system to be in first gear, say in third gear, fourth gear, sixth gear, etc. 
And that's where we're going to use an up down counter. So simple up down counter, and we're going to go and place it down over here. Now we can say that when we are at one on the up and down, we want to change gear up. When we're at negative one, we want to change gear down. The only problem with that is if I go and press up on my keyboard now, it will send a one value, but it might send a one value for two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. So it's going to change one, two, three, four, five. It's going to jump gears. Same goes when we're doing down gear, it might jump those gears. So to alleviate that problem, we only want one signal to go through when we press the up. We only want one signal to go through when we press the down. And we can use a pulse block for that. I'm going to get two of them. One for the changing down gear and one for the changing up gear. Okay, so simple pulse. That means it only sends one signal through. Now, we can obviously go and start configuring the number of gears we have. Now, I know that I have seven gears, six obviously to go forwards and one to go reverse. So I'm going to go to my up down counter. I'm going to say six is the maximum and negative one is the minimum. I'm going to enable my clamp and I'm going to say, hey, you're only going to change one gear at a time. So increment value of one. We now have a number saying we're in gear one, gear two, gear three, etc. So now we can use some threshold gates to actually go and read that number. Okay, so we're going to go to the same number of threshold gates as we do gearboxes, and we're going to place it down over here. We're now going to connect our up and down to these threshold gates. And now we can start going and configuring them. So we're going to say, for example, for our reverse, when we're in negative one and negative one, then we want our reverse gearbox to be on. When we're in, let's say, one to one, we want our first gearbox to turn on. When we're on two to two, we want our second one and so on and so forth. Now there is a problem. When we're changing our gears up, yeah? So for example, when our gearbox says one, it's going enabling this gearbox over here. When it says number two, it's enabling this one, but it's also going and turning this one off because this one's only be turned on when there's a one value. So we want to stop that from happening. We want this gearbox to be on whether we're in gear one, two, three, four, five, or six. Same goes for gearbox number two. We only want that to be on when we're in gear two, three, four, five, and six. So you can go into the threshold gate and say, hey, be on if you're anywhere between one and six. Second one, be on between anywhere between two and six. 3 and 6, 4 and 6, 5 and 6, and 6 to 6. That way it will keep these gearboxes on as it carries on gearing up and gearing up and gearing up. As I said, if you don't have this many gearboxes, you don't have to add this much on. You only have to do as many as you have gearboxes for. Once we've got this set up, we could even add an additional node to read what number gear we're currently on. Okay, so go number, output, and let's say this is our gear and number. Go back to our logic and we can just connect that over to our up and down counter. Very simple. Let's go and save this. So we're gonna come here, save it, close this out, and let's go and add this to our creation. I'm gonna make sure I put it in orange so you guys can clearly see my transmission system here at the back. Let's start connecting this. So up and down from my seat, Make sure that your seat is set to 100% and reset. This will allow you to change gears really nice and quickly and smoothly. Go back to your transmission system and start connecting everything else. I also want a readout for the number of gear I'm currently on. So I'm going to go up into my dash here and I'm going to add a simple dial. That way I can tell the system and tell me what gear we're currently in. So I'm going to go there and say negative one all the way through to six, and this will be gear. Perfect. Make sure we connect that over to the gear number of our transmission. And now we can start connecting all of these nodes over to our gearboxes. Now, as I said, I have my first gearbox over here, which is on a nine to five by one to one. Then I have my reverse gearbox. And then I have my other gearboxes, which slowly starts stepping it up. Three to two, three to two, three to two, three to two. So let's start getting connected. So my first gearbox, my second gearbox, my third gearbox, fourth gearbox, fifth gearbox, sixth gearbox, and my reverse gearbox, which remember is the second one over here. Okay. Once we've got that, in theory, we're all set. Make sure you have electricity to these gearboxes if you just add them in. I have them here already. 
and I'm also going to make sure that my dial has got some electricity. Okay. I'm then going to spawn this in. If I go and spawn this in, I should be able to use my up and down counter or up and down on my keyboard to change gears. There we go. Have a look at that. How easily I can change my gears now. So let's start at zero. Let's turn this truck on. Let's go forwards and change my gears. And there we go. You can obviously see if I stop the truck and I'm in gear four, if I try to move it forwards now, there's not enough power. So I'm going to lower my gears and go forwards. I can even throw it into reverse and try to go in reverse. Okay, give it a few seconds, obviously, just for it to stop. Put it into reverse. There we go. We're now driving in reverse gear. Okay, very simple how you can do a manual gearbox or transmission setup here in Stormworks. Well, let's now learn how we can make this an automatic transmission system so that it's going to go and change the gears for us so we don't have to do anything. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can go about doing this. You could use the wheel RPS, you could use the wheel torque, you could use your speed, you could use the engine RPS. Once again, as I said earlier, this video or tutorial is not meant to be the best way or the only way to do it. It's the way I do it and the way I like to set things up. So I'm going to be using the engine RPS for this example. So we're going to go onto our mic controller and I'm going to go and add on a new node to read our engine RPS. So RPS and it's going to be a number input. Let's go to the logic and let's start configuring our logic for this. So we of course want to go and read the RPS and we're going to use some threshold gates to see when our RPS is too high or too low. We're going to get two of them just over here. We're going to say, okay, RPS. When the RPS is, let's say above 12 and uh, between 99999, then we want to go and change the gear up. When the RPS drops too low, let's say from six all the way down to zero, then we want you to down gear or downshift. Okay. But we've already got our manual system over here. So we can go and add some ores. Okay. Just simple go and add some ore blocks on here. So now whether we are, for example, changing it manually to go up or if the system over here is automatically telling it to go up, then we want to send one pulse signal through to change our gear up just over here. We can do the same thing with the actual downshifting. So whether we are manually going and telling it to downshift or if the system is telling it to downshift, then it's going to go and send a pulse over to your gearbox. Now, just a little bit of a note and a side tip here. If your gearbox is not downshifting quick enough for you, meaning you're driving and you're turning a corner and it then goes six, five, four. Whereas if you lose enough RPS, you want it to go all the way back down. What you can do is you can actually remove this pulse, connect it directly over here and only use a pulse for the manual gearbox change. Okay, so that's a little bit of a trick there that you can use there, okay, which is quite nice to use. Now that we've got that, in theory, that's all we need to change gears. We can go and spawn that in. Make sure that you go and connect the RPS sensor from the engine, which is just over there, so that it will go and change its gears automatically. Now you can configure this to change gears at different RPS levels if you want to. My example, I said change at 12 and downshift at six. Once again, it's up to you on what you set up here. Now we also have another problem is that when the RPS gets too low, this actual system is going to throw it into reverse. Well, let's stop it from going in reverse for now. Okay. So we're going to stop this whole system from going into reverse at the moment. We'll come back to this and we'll fix this later on. Let's just test to see if this new automatic system is going to work. So we're going to update it, confirm it, and we're going to go and spawn this in. This should now go and automatically change our gears for us. Start the engine up, go forwards. It reached the RPS and you can see it's now going in, changing our gears for us. I can go and downshift. This truck has got a lot of power, so it really does change gears very quickly. 
what I would do for this example is I would go and configure my gearboxes to have higher ratios on them. But that's what I would do for this example. But we're not worried about tuning our gearboxes today. We're worried about an automatic transmission system. Okay, so let's go back and let's carry on building this. Okay, so now it's time that we want to actually go and add a reverse functionality onto this truck and we want to get it back and working. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Now, the easiest thing I think you can possibly go and do is you can add an option here that you can only manually put it into reverse. That's the only time you're allowed to actually ever go into reverse is if you manually tell it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say, hey, if our gearbox, for example, we've got a threshold, if our gearbox is on zero to zero and we go and tell the system to downshift manually, okay, just over here, then we're going to go and enable our actual reverse functionality. Okay, that's the only time we're going to enable our reverse functionality. The problem is that when we are currently there and we're in reverse, it's still going to show a zero over here because this is what we left on zero. Okay, so how do we fix that? Well, we already got it, an on off here saying that we're in reverse. So we can go and add a switch box and we can say to the switch box, when we're in reverse, we want a negative one to go out to our gears. Yeah, so we're gonna go here and it's gonna negative one. But when we are not in reverse, we want our gear number to go through just like that. Okay. And that's how you can do your reverse box or reverse setting on the gearbox. We can go and update this. Cool. We can now go and spawn that in. And if we jump into our seat chair, you'll notice that we can either go down. If we hold our actual down button, it will go into reverse. Or if we let go, it jumps back into zero gear. Now we can turn our engine on. We can drive normally like we would normally do. Drive around. Yeah, stop the truck here. We're now back in zero gear. We now press the down key and we're in reverse. We can now reverse around as much as we want to. We can let go of the down key whenever we want. It drops it back into zero and we can now drive the truck and we'll carry on driving it. And it will never actually downshift into negative one, except when you manually tell it to go into reverse, which is a really cool feature, I think. Okay. So now that we've got all of that set up, the truck is now automatically going and shifting gear for us. You'll notice the RPS is climbing really high and it's changing gears really quickly. I would go personally, as I said earlier, I would go and change the ratios on our gearboxes. But that's what we're not what we're here for. We're not learning obviously how to configure gearboxes. We're learning how to build a transmission system. Now, the next thing which I think is really cool is to have a system that will go and enable the clutch when you want to change gears. Meaning that when you just about to change the gears, the clutch goes and turns on, no power goes through to the wheels, you change gear and then you get power back into your wheels. Okay, so we're going to create an automatic system that's going to do all that hard work for you. Think of it as like in a manual car, when you want to change a gear, you would push your clutch pedal, you would change your gear and then you would Low, and slowly put your foot away from the clutch pedal and you would carry on going into a different gear. So we're going to get our actual little mic controller to do that for us. Okay, which is going to be hopefully really cool. Now we're back inside the mic controller and we want to kind of set up like a staging system. So when we want to change gear, it goes and does the clutch. Once it does the clutch, then it goes and changes the gear. And once it's finishing changing the gear, it goes and puts the clutch back on. Okay, so that's the, theoretically the system we want. Now, we've already got an indicator here when we're changing gears, okay, which is really nice, which means we can just break this now into two separate areas, okay? So we're gonna dis disconnect all this, we don't need it anymore, okay? And we're gonna put a little bit of a stopper in between this, okay, like a system that's gonna work in between here. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna, of course, extend this. We're gonna extend this a little bit and we're going to say, hey, we want a new one which is going to be for our clutch. Okay, so we want a new one which is going to be for our clutch. Simply go and add it as a number and it's going to be an output for our clutch. Great, we can now go into our logic and this is where we're going to use another up and down counter. Okay, and that's going to be what's going to be controlling our clutch. So we're just going to put that over here. Now, a clutch value goes from zero to one. 
So we're going to go enable the clamp and we're going to go say zero to one. Now we are also going to have a reset value. I'm actually going to put the reset value as one. That way the clutch is always on or it's always disengaged, meaning power is going to go through to the wheels or to the gearboxes. Increments, how fast or how slowly do you want it to go in? Engage or disengage the clutch. We're going to start with 0.1. If you find it's changing too quickly, go and put an extra zero. If it's too slow, remove a zero. Okay, so you can play around with this as much as you want to. Okay, we could add another zero here, then it will take quite a long time for it to go and turn the clutch on and off. So now that we've got that, we obviously want the clutch to be engaged, which means a zero number when we're about to change a gear. Either one of these gears, okay, we want to change. We're actually gonna get rid of this little push button for now, okay, and we're just gonna go back to the fully system just over here. So what we're going to do now is we're gonna say, if we wanna up gear and if we wanna down gear, then we want our clutch to be engaged, which means it needs to go down to zero. So down to zero, okay? So if any of those, either one knows that it wants to change gears, then we are going to go bring it down, okay? Which is gonna be quite useful. You can also get rid of this push button once again and just bring it up into this, okay? So it's now combining all of this together. Now, of course, when we know it wants to change gear, it's gonna bring it down to zero. Once it's brought it down to zero, okay? So once we have no power going through the wheels anymore, we're using a threshold gate to check that, zero and zero, then we want it to go and change the gear either up or down. Now, how do we know which one? Well, we've already got a little node here telling us to either change it up or change it down. Okay, so we're going to go and get an AND block, simple AND block just over here. Just like that, get two of them over there. And we're gonna say that when this is zero, so when the clutch is currently engaged, and when we wanna change the gear up, for example, or when we want to change the gear down, for example, then you can go and change the gear up and then change the gear down, okay? Now, once again, I would recommend you go and add a pulse on here so it doesn't quickly go and change the gears up, but we're happy with it going and changing the gears down quite quickly, okay? You can also go and add that pulse back on over here if you wanted to. I personally wouldn't, um, but we can just keep it on here for now. Okay, so you can see there we've got the simple pulse which will stop it from going from one, two, three, four, five. It will do one, then two, then three, then four. But to downshift, it can go really quickly, yeah? Which is quite nice. Now, now that we've told the system, hey, we wanna change gears, do the clutch. Once you've done the clutch, then go and change the gear. We also want to tell the system that once you've finished doing the gears, go and put the clutch back on. Well, we've already got a system here telling us that we're starting the process. So all we need to do is delay it by a few seconds. And we're going to be doing that by using a capacitor. So we're going to say, hey, when the clutch is fully gotten down to zero and you've changed your gear, then send a signal through to the capacitor, send it through directly and then go and start bringing my clutch back up, please, to a one value. Now, how long it goes and continues to bring it up is up to you. For example, we can set it to two seconds, which means that it cannot do another gear change until this capacitor has gone and finished. Okay, that two second interval. You can bring this down if you wanted to change gears much quicker. You can bring it even slower, means it, only, it will only ever change gear up every 10 seconds. Okay, so it's up to you on what you set here. I'm gonna set it to two seconds. So every two seconds, it's allowed to go and change a gear. Okay, which is, uh, I think, pretty cool thing. You can once again play around with it, whatever you want. Okay, now that we have this all done, we in theory can go and spawn this in. So we can go and click on update, and we can go and connect our clutch. So I'm gonna go and take the clutch here and connect it to my clutch for my actual engine. I have two modular engine clutches. So I'm gonna connect it both to that. I don't need anything else and I can now go and spawn this in. So we can go and jump into our seat here. We'll see we're in gear in zero. We're gonna turn our engine on. 
Now every time we, the system thinks it wants to change a gear, it's going to go and engage the clutch, stop sending power through to the wheels, change the gear, and then slowly start putting the clutch back down to 1. So let's go and start off, go forwards, went up, change gears, went up, but you'll notice there's a big problem. Whenever we're changing the gears, our RPS or our throttle, because there's no more load on the engine, is going absolutely berserk. And you can see we flipped over there, because theoretically we were giving it a full throttle with no load. So the RPS was shooting all the way up. Okay. Now you can get past that issue by going and sending a zero or a negative value to your throttle whenever you're changing gears. Now we already know that we're changing gears over here. Yeah, whenever the clutch is at zero is when we're changing gears, okay? So in theory, we can create a little bit of a throttle pass through. We're gonna go to our design and we're going to add two new nodes. One is gonna be for throttle in and one is going to be for throttle out. Number in, number out, okay? Then we go into our logic part and we say, we get a th switch box and we say when over here, when you are currently changing gears. Yeah, so when, for example, let's use a threshold gate and let's say when you are, your clutch is between zero and 0 0.9, for example, we want a value of negative one to go through to our throttle. Yeah, and we're going to make this a negative one. But when we want, when we're not changing gears, we want to send our normal throttle through to our engine. Okay, so we're going to be using that over here to do that. Okay, which is a really quite nice feature. Now, there is another note that you can take into effect here is that you must remember when your engine starts, it might think that the RPS is too low, so it will try to continuously downshift and downshift and downshift. Now, in theory, you don't really have to worry about that just yet, but you could put something in so that it wouldn't change gears unless you're actually driving the vehicle. Okay, and you'll see that a little bit clearer, clearly in a few more seconds. I'm actually going to add a light and a node on here to show you when it's changing gears and it's doing the whole clutch movement. So I'm just going to go and put here a light and it's going to be an output. Tell us when we're changing gears. Okay. You don't have to add this on. This is purely just for our testing environment right now for us to see when it's changing our gears. I'm going to go and update this and I'm going to add a light inside our actual cabin here. So go in here, let's add a light and you guys will be able to see then when it's changing our gears. Going to connect that over to our light and also give it some electricity. Cool. We also need to connect our throttle. That's the last part here. So you'll notice that our modular engine has got an air throttle. We're going to do that as our input throttle and then the output is going to go to our air. Okay. So in theory, what it's doing is it's giving a negative one to our air every time it knows it wants to change gears. Okay. Which is really quite useful. Okay. Now, before we go and spawn this in on another note, if your car is not changing its gears quick enough and it's losing too much throttle, as I said earlier, go and change these values here to make your clutch work a little bit quicker. So I've just gone and removed one of the zeros and we're going to go and spawn this in now and let's actually finally go and test this out. So we're going to go jump in our creation and you'll notice by the way that light is turning on and off. That's because our engine is off and the RPS is too low. So in theory, it thinks it wants to downshift. As I said earlier, I would add an on off node so that only when our engine's on will this actual system work. Let's go and turn our engine on. Cool, that light is in theory should stop going away now. Okay, now you can see it's changing gears too quickly. Okay, which means our RPS to change our gears is currently actually too high. So let's just go and jump out again. I'm just going to go and check my RPS values. 8 RPS, let's bring that down to like five RPS for idle. That way it won't go and actually change my gears too quickly. Cool. Perfect. So that looks about right now. So let's go and start moving forwards. 
Okay. So gear zero. Bring it up. There we go. Again, there we go. And carries on. Yeah, dropped gear. Up again. See the light goes on every time we want to change gears. This truck is very fast. I need to add more gearboxes. But you can see that how it's going and changing and it's doing the clutch every single time. It thinks the RPS is either too high or too low. Go and increase it again here. Clutch, done. Okay, so you can see how it's shifting there, which is really pretty cool. How it's doing that. Now, as I said, this is not the easiest way or the best way or the correct way. And I've got way too much throttle on this truck. Oh man, this truck is so much fun to play with. Um, so, as I said, this is not the best way. This is not the only way. This is just the way I do it. Obviously, I'd probably add a bunch more different functions onto it uh, and you guys can play around with it. But hopefully this video has served as a really nice tutorial to not only show you how to create a manual transmission system, not only to create an automatic transmission system, but also how to create a transmission system that also goes in, plays around with your clutch management of your truck or your car, or whatever it is that you're trying to work with. Of course, as I said, you can add on to this, but this has kind of just been a nice little learning video for you. I hope you really have enjoyed these videos. Obviously, it does take quite a lot to put it into to make these tutorials for you. So I really hope you do enjoy it. And if you have, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about the videos and why down there. Don't forget that like and subscribe button. And until the next video, we will see you then.